You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. It's great to be here with you today. Excited to get into today's topic on our Training Thursday show and getting into the irony of training or exercising for your specific body type. So I've spoken in depth about body types before, and I will give links to those shows But the reason for today's show is that there's so much confusion out there about your body type and then how to specifically choose diet and exercise and lifestyle for that body type. So what I wanted to do today was really clear the air because finding out your body type is not difficult. It honestly is not. But people make it super confusing with a lot of their online quizzes and their you know different charts or whatever it might be. But I'll tell you right now, The origin of body type started 6,000 years ago with Ayurvedic medicine. Now, it started much more before that, but in terms of written recorded history, we know about 6,000 years ago, they were writing down the different doshas. And the dosha simply means the three different constitutions or three different body types with with subtypes between those. But again, the issue that we have is a lot of what's being taught here in the U.S. is completely incorrect. And I don't say that from a condemning or uh, disparaging standpoint, not at all. But I do need to clear, clear the air because people are being misled every single day as to what their body type is. So, you know, for one, I would love you to go back and listen to episode 900, 907, and then each week from episode 900 on for about 100 shows not 100 total, but for between like 900 and 1,000. Each week, 907, 914, 921, I believe, we'll link them up for today. Why don't we do that? Instead of you having to go look for them, just head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1238, stephencabral.com forward slash 1238, and I will link up those previous body type shows and even the images that you can use to match up your body type. And that's what I want to do really for people. So, The confusion is this, and it's not harmful. I mean, it's not meant to be harmful from a lot of the people out there teaching it. They just don't have an in-depth knowledge of Ayurveda. And that's understandable because Ayurveda takes not months, not books, but years and years to study. And that just intimidates or people don't want to put in the work. And again, I understand that. We don't live in a society now where we talk about going in depth. We read a book or we, you know, read an article and then all of a sudden, you know, we just say, hey, well, I get the gist of it. I understand it. But you can't do that with something as intricate as Ayurvedic medicine. And again, this is not meant to be disparaging in any way. But here's the thing. We have people calling themselves, oh, I'm a Vata body type. I'm a Pitta body type. I'm this. But they're clearly not. Like they're not that body type at all. What they're confusing, and I've said this before, but they're confusing their mindset with their actual dosha. Now, dosha does include the psychology, the physiology of the body, but not when giving recommendations based on nutrition, exercise, sleep, and overall lifestyle. It does matter. So again, if you're living in the United States you are most likely not a kapha mindset. Very few people are. What does that mean? Well, your mindset is not most likely that of relaxation and downtime and no cares at all, no stress, right? That's the kapha mindset. Now, there are negative sides to that. I explained that in one of my previous podcasts that I'll link up. But that's just not the society that we live in. The fast-paced go, go, go is the vata mindset, which is why... Most people believe they're a vata-based body type, but they are not. Their mindset is in the vata. Now, that's, again, totally understandable why that mistake would come up. 
The second part is why would they believe they're a pitta? Well, a pitta is that person that's the leader, that they're ambitious, that they take on a lot of responsibilities, that they can trend more towards anger or rage or irritability, where vata will be more of the overwhelmed and anxious. Again, US-based, right? Or Western-based. It's not just the US. So when you look at that, of course, a lot of people are going to believe they're a vata or a pitta, but it's simply not the case. And they might say, oh, well, I get bloating. Well, the bloating doesn't necessarily mean that you're a vata-based body type. It means that you might have candida overgrowth or SIBO or something to that nature. So what we have to understand is that when we're really talking about our dosha, unless you go by the structure of your body, you're always going to be wrong. Because the structure of your body is the first dictation of your constitution. So if you are more prone to, eat, to gaining weight, like you look at carbohydrates and you gain weight, you're most likely a kapha body type. But again, I have a podcast on all of this on how to actually match your body type up with that. And if you are someone that you get worn down very easily, you, you have a tendency to lose weight if you're not actually eating enough, you're more of the ectomorph or vata body type. And if you're somewhere in the middle where you know overall you're pretty athletic, you keep muscle on pretty easily, then you're more of the pitta-based body type. And I, that's a gross oversimplification right there. Please don't go by that. I actually have images that you can match up your body type. But again, it gets even easier. So when you look at your... And that's why you can never be the one to judge your own body type. Because we all have these predispositions of what we want to be, which is why we put it into what we believe we are, right? So most guys, myself included, are like, oh no, we're the I'm, I'm a pit of body type. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a pit of body type. And because you're like, oh, I put on muscle. And, no, no, like that's what most guys want to be, but that's not necessarily the truth, right? And I work with a lot of females and like, oh, I'm a vata body type. Well, that's just what society is dictating that you should want to be. But that's not necessarily the truth. And all of the body types are fantastic. All you're supposed to do is work with your body type and keep it balanced. So it's, it's a really important thing you know, to look at overall is that there's beauty in every body type and you shouldn't want to be another body type. You shouldn't let society or culture dictate what body type is beautiful or it's supposed to be that way. Really, really important. And the other thing too is that there are subtypes, but you always have a typically, not always, but you typically have a predominant type, dosha. And then you might have a subtype, what you trend towards, right? So that's important to look at. And again, it gets a little bit more intricate. I, I hope that my previous podcast will help you understand that. But if you look at the, the main body types and you just look at the ectomorph, you're talking about a longer face, a longer, thinner neck, narrower shoulders, not as much muscle in the body. You can see the joints are very, very prominent. They lose weight very easily. Thinner hips on both men and women and waist and very small calves, very small wrists and forearms. Okay, they have Smaller hands, meaning thinner, more delicate, same with the feet, but they can be long. So like Vata can also be tall and long or it can be short and, and thin as well. Like So it's totally, again, it could be either side. But it's always the background to this dosha is air and ether. So it's basically movement and lightness, okay? When you look at someone's body, does it look light and airy? That's basically the first part to doing overall dosha assessment. In the future, we will offer these in my practice because it is it is confusing. I, there's no doubt about that, right? I had to go to an actual practitioner and say, like, what is my dosha? And not every practitioner actually is great at it. Like, that's just part of the thing. We have a specific system and it's a head to toe assessment that I do. But anyway, let's, let's get move away from that. And when you look at the pitta, well, the face is more of a square face. Again, this is, I'm, I'm talking about just in general shapes. The vata would be a longer, more rectangle or oval face shape. The pitta would be more of a square based jawline. I can't go through all of it today. I go through it in the past shows, but they have more of a stronger, thicker neck. They have more wider shoulders, uh, more of a muscular-based physique. They have more of a muscular-based hips and glutes and legs. They have calf muscles that are clearly defined. So you can look at that body type that's more of the pitta. And then the kapha, and the reason I'm going over this right now is because I want to give you those exercise recommendations and the irony of how people mischoose their exercise based on their body type, which is actually kind of funny. And I think that we all sometimes do this. 
And the kafa-based uh, body type is more of a rounder shaped head. And again, nobody has like a perfectly circular head, so I'm not saying that, but more a rounder shape. They have uh, softer features to the face. So the, the face is going to be, you can see their cheeks are more prominent. It's a softer cheeks. There's less clearly defined cheeks or jaw-based definition. They have a shorter, thinner neck. Their shoulders are not broad, but they do have more of a robust chest. And uh, they hold, it's not that a kapha body type has to be overweight. That's not that at all. That's a misnomer. But the body type looks a little softer. And again, it doesn't mean necessarily less muscular. It doesn't because kapha is actually the most anabolic. So it can put on a lot of muscle if they choose to. But it means that they have a little less muscle definition. And again, that's not bad but it means that the body looks a little softer. And they typically have a little bit wider hips. They have more muscle or they have more, again, kapha body type is represented by earth and water. So they have more water retention or their legs and calves are a little bit bigger towards down towards the ankle. And again, it's not for everyone. Sometimes people are predominantly kapha and they have very thin calves and ankles. That doesn't mean that you're a vata body type. It means that your predominance is kapha and you might have a secondary type of vata. Okay, that's really important to look at that. So when we so now we kind of have just a general overview of the body types and this will make a lot more sense as you go back to the previous shows. So what I want to go over now though is how to choose exercise and I did um, a whole show in this more in depth. So check this out at episode 944. We'll link that up as well. I'll link up basically every show between 900 and let's say like a thousand. There'll probably be what about eight shows or so in there, maybe nine shows on Ayurveda if you're interested in this and you can just pick the ones that are your favorites, right? So I'll link that up today at one, two, three, eight. Okay, so right now I want to dive into the actual irony behind what each body type tends to lean towards for the exercise or movement that they enjoy in their life. Now, the first one we're going to go with is the vata body type or the ectomorph. Again, typically you can see more of the joints, the body's a little bit leaner, it, it trends more towards weight loss in general or being thin. But of course, sometimes vatas can also gain a little bit of belly fat from processed food or blood sugar dysregulation, high levels of cortisol and stress. But overall, the body's pretty thin and lean. So when vatas or ectomorphs go to choose their exercise, a lot of it uh, for them should be based on calming levels of anxiety, calming levels of stress, calming levels of overwhelm. Now, again, stay with me till the end here because I know everybody feels this, but we still have to base it on our body type. Because if not, we're going to be out of balance with our actual physiology, with our true body, not just our mind. Okay, because at the end, what I want to do is give you what everyone should do for that anxiety and stress, et cetera, right? So those are other things we're going to do beyond our exercise. So I just made a little note because I have to make sure that I actually give that to you. All right, so the first thing is this. The, the absolute best thing, and, and I do go in depth on 944, so I'll link that, but the absolute best thing for the Vata body type in terms of exercise and movement is some light walking in nature, whenever possible. What that does is it deeply grounds them, especially if they could do it barefoot, whether it's outside in the grass, at a beach, etc. That's very grounding. You know, going for a hike in the woods is very grounding for that body type. It's very grounding for everyone. It's amazing for everyone in this crazy world that we live in with Wi-Fi everywhere. And it's just good to get away, to unplug. And when you go for that hike, Shut your phone off. You can keep it there for emergencies if you want, but literally power it down. Don't just put it on airplane mode. Power it down. Completely no Wi-Fi, no radiation from any of your devices. It's a great thing to do. Another amazing thing for the Vata body type is some very light biking. Ideally, again, outside in nature if possible. So you're breathing that fresh air. Hatha yoga, absolutely fantastic for the body type, for the ectomorph and Vata. Tai Chi or Qigong. Now, not all forms of Qigong are actually movement-based. The form of Qigong that I like the most is actually a stillness Qigong. And if you've never heard of Qigong, you can check it out. It's just C-H-I-G-O-N-G, or how I typically spell it is Q-I, 
G-O-N-G. And it's an amazing form of basically bringing energy back into the body. I started practicing that around 2003, definitely got way more into it in 2004. And it was one of those things that I think helped to kind of rebuild the energy system inside of my body. Pretty amazing practice. Again, it's going to take weeks to months to really feel uh, to really feel that rejuvenation, uh, but a great, great practice. It's essentially a standing meditation that you can do for healing. Really, really great. And it's not just for healing, but it has to do with internal uh, energy. So here's the thing, though. Here's the irony be- behind the Vata, though. Vata body types love to run. They just love to go out and run when that is not the ideal thing for a more catabolic body type. Now, a more catabolic body type means that the body loses muscle or it loses weight in general at a much easier rate than, say, the kapha body type. So hopefully that's giving you a hint for the kapha. So with the ectomorph, the more they run, the more catabolic they may be, the more free radical damage, the more oxidation in the body. Now, again, the vata body type already oxidizes, already burns up at a faster rate. So going out for a long run is not recommended for the Vata body type at all. That walking, the light biking, the Hatha yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, all really important. And I do actually recommend a little bit of body weight training for the body type. And the reason I recommend that body weight training for the Vata body type or with some light to moderate weights is because they could be more prone to osteoporosis and sarcopenia, overall muscle loss, bone loss in the body as they age. So for every human alive, I I can't really think of any human that I wouldn't recommend two days a week of weight training to. Monday, Thursday, Wednesday, Saturday, certainly three days a week would be even better. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, all fantastic. I've I've given um, podcasts before on training Thursdays on how to break up your splits for your week. So definitely check those out at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. But the reason why I do recommend it for the Vata, and I'm going to give you a little caveat to that, is that I don't want to, I want to make sure that they build up enough muscle to, to keep their bodies strong because they more, are more of a delicate, and I use that in air quotes, they're not delicate, but their body is a little thinner in bone structure and a little thinner overall in terms of the muscle they keep on their body. A little harder to keep it on, right? Because they're, their metabolism's so elevated, again, unlike the Kapha body type. So we want to be careful at actually how much we're burning in terms of fuel for the Vata. They do well with that pre-workout meal or smoothie, and same with the post-workout too. So we just make sure we don't become too catabolic. So I definitely recommend that for that Vata body type. And then overall, you want to understand is that you don't need and you don't want to do a lot of hard boot camp type training, CrossFit type training. It doesn't mean CrossFit's bad. It doesn't mean boot camps are bad. We just don't want to overdo it. That's all. We don't want to be pushing too hard because what happens is the vata is more in their nervous system, right? So really hard interval training, things like that, just simply burn out that nervous system. And unless the vata is sleeping nine, 10 hours a day and getting plenty of fuel for their body and not stress the rest of the time, it's just going to be too much. Again, you can always balance it, but you have to be really careful. So overall though, vatas do not need a lot of weight training or exercise in general to control their weight. If their weight is not being controlled overall lifestyle-wise, they're simply not doing enough just walking. They're not getting in their two days a week, let's say, of some resistance training or movement, and they're they're overeating on processed carbs as well. Vatas, like most body types, love their carbs, and it's okay with the vatas because they can eat their fruit and they can eat their starches, but they have to be careful about those processed carbs and eating too often throughout the day. All right, next up is the pitta based body type. So the pittas, here's the now I already told you before, pittas are the, you know, they are quite an athletic body type in general overall. So they can do well at all types of athletics. And they do well with a mix of athletics, some cardio, some intervals, some weight training, and they can actually push themselves at a pretty good limit with weights. So with the Vata body type, they really shouldn't go too low in reps. They shouldn't be at like the three to five reps for most of their workouts. And the reason is that's more neurological. So it burns out their nervous system. Vatas do better at the eight to 15 rep range or so. And again, there are always pluses and minuses. You could do a Vata-based training program with someone for five by five, one day in their program for four to six week period of time. It's really just being careful on maxing out, right? You don't want to max out their nervous system. Where the pittas do much better in that. Here's the problem though. Here's the problem. And they've always known in Ayurvedic medicine. Pittas love to compete. 
and they love to push themselves to the highest level. So again, here's a good example. I'm not the pit to body type. So I put on muscle fairly easily. It doesn't mean that I'm of the pit to body type. It's not my frame. That's not my body. Do I have pitta in my body? Yes, because we all do, just certain percentages. I have the pitta mindset though, which is why, again, I could say, oh, I'm a pitta, but I'm not. I'm a pitta in a lot of ways, but it's not my constitution. It's not my body. So what happens though is if I take, like a lot of people do with a pitta mindset, and of course, a lot of people in a pitta body have a pitta mindset, is that you take that into your exercise and you're, you're competing in your exercise and you're trying to one-up every workout in your exercise and you're trying to compete against the next person in your exercise. And like your whole day is about competition and like trying to always outdo. And when you have that, you can also burn yourself out. And it's especially important for someone like myself where you can't go into your exercise. You can't go into your daily life like that because you'll burn out. Really, really important to look at that. So I try to share that with people is that we don't need to add as exercise more stress on our body. So pittas do great with pretty much all different types of stress, but there's two things that Ayurveda has always said about the pitta body type, which would be the mesomorph in, in our kind of modern day language, is that swimming has always been the best form of exercise for the pitta. And here's why. Pittas are governed by heat, fire, and water, and swimming is cooling for the body. It's relaxing. You float in the water, which means it kind of reduces your overall stress. It calms the nervous system. So it's it's the best thing for the pitta based body type. So being able to swim a couple times a week would be great for the pitta. And the other time is I say, okay, do your workout, whatever you choose for the most part. Don't overdo it. Don't compete. Don't you know like push too hard, cause more stress. But end after you're done with your workout. Do 10 minutes of stretching. Do 15 minutes of foam rolling. Get into a Epsom salt soak. Do a relaxing sauna. But don't try to compete in the sauna. A lot of pittas, they try to stay in the sauna for like the longest time possible. No, do something relaxing. Get a a gentle, not a deep tissue massage, which a lot of pittas would like to do. So do something to calm your nervous system after your workout. So again, the vata loves to get out there and do more movement, right? They're movement-based. They love to run. But it's the worst thing that you could do for the vata-based body type. Pittas, they love to compete. They love to get out there and crush every single workout. That's not good for the pitta. It causes more stress, more competition, and more like kind of rage and aggression, right? But we want to do the opposite of that. We want to keep the body calm. We want to do more of that swimming. And the kapha-based body type, here's the irony. I'm going to get right off the bat. Who is the irony about the kapha? The kaphas love to walk. They love to do gentle workouts. They love doing the hatha yoga. They love doing the things that the vatas should be doing. But the problem is they need to do the things that the vatas love to do. And it's vice versa, right? It's, it's funny because kaphas have what? The mindset typically of a kapha-based mindset. So they love more of the serene, the relaxation. They love to go for a gentle walk. They love to just sit and chat and talk and relax. And they maybe do a little bit of hatha yoga, but nothing too stimulating. So that's more of the kapha-based body and mindset. And it's great. Like they're all, when you look at it like that, it's, you know, there's really so much beauty in nature. But here's the problem. It's always about balance. Remember, I never say it's about moderation. I always say it's about balance because it's balancing with your body type and your current state. Now, again, people might have to do different exercise for the current state right now. If I work with someone who's a kapha-based body type and they have, we call it chronic fatigue syndrome, right, in today's society, but it might be a HPA access or myalgic encephalomyelitis in more of like a medical term speak, well, we're not going to go all out, right? Because that's that that wouldn't be smart. But overall, the kapha body type actually needs to be pushed. They need to do more of that interval-based training. They need to do more of that uh, circuit-based training. They need to lift weights, but not necessarily heavy weights because their body's already naturally anabolic. They typically already carry around a more mass. They may need only the two days a week of weight training, and it could just be body weight. And then the rest of the time, not just interval training, cardio works exceptionally well for the kapha body type. And here's why. And I have so much clinical data to back this up. And it's simply, I want to share that with you. I've seen cardio 30, 40 minutes or so on an upright bike, a spin class, even going for a jog if the body's not too overweight. It allows them to lower glucose levels in the blood. It allows them to lower blood sugar levels, which then enables them to burn more body fat. And it works exceptionally well, better than anything else, because a hard weight training workout can actually elevate glucose levels. And again, I see that clinically all the time because I use 
continuous glucose monitors. I use blood sugar testing with a glucometer after workouts. I do all these different types of things with people in my practice so that we can, you know, people call it biohacking, but we're looking to just optimize the human body and customize every part of kind of their exercise and lifestyle. So the kapha body type is very important. Because they like to, they'd rather, they don't want to move their body. They want to just relax. So here's the thing though, and they love to sleep, but they don't need as much sleep, right? Because their body's naturally more anabolic. Here's the thing though, is they need the daily movement. They need 10,000 plus steps a day, and they need five to six days of actual exercise. Now, it could be going for a 30 to 40 minute, you know, moderate to good paced bike ride. Yeah, the next day might be some circuit-based resistance training, maybe just body weight. The next day could be interval-based training, then they have a day off. And then after that, it could be a, let's say, another resistance-based training day. And the next day might be a longer cardio day. This time, they're going for a jog as long as they're in proper biomechanical alignment. So here's the thing, like that could be their workout for the week, but you want to make sure as a cough of body type that you never have more than one day off in a row. Because if you have two days off, that metabolism really does start to just sink. Where, again, it's not the same as the ectomorph. They're governed by a higher autonomic nervous system rate, where the kapha based body type is just a lower CNS output, central nervous system output, lower autonomic nervous system output. It doesn't mean one body type's better than the other. A vata body type is more prone to burning out. The kapha body type is just more prone to the type 2 diabetes, the weight gain, the obesity, those types of things. So again, there's no one best body type. It's simply staying balanced with your body type. And that's what I wanted to share today. So, you know, it really should always be about positivity and it should be about teaching. I just want to make sure that, you know, if you're on Facebook and you're reading an article or you, you know, you're taking some type of quiz, I don't think that the practitioner or the company or whatever is ever meeting any harm, but we have to be careful. We have to be careful with what we're following for our body. And that's really the most important thing is I just want to make sure that you do things right, that you get the proper information. And again, none of this is my information. I spent multiple years traveling overseas, learning all of this information from amazing masters that I couldn't possibly try to emulate You know their work, whether I was studying with Dr. Pramdani and Dr. Pereira and Dr. Mori, like so many great doctors you know, that I studied with. And I'm simply trying to pass on 6,000 years of this amazing history of Ayurvedic medicine and the doshas and the body types. I'm going to link up previous shows. I hope that you know you maybe you take a little bit of an interest in this, or at least just listen to the podcast outlines. I'll link those up today at stephencabral.com forward slash one two three eight. That's where today's show notes will be. And the one thing I told you, again, for everybody out there saying, oh, I'm a vata body type or I'm a pitta body type, remember, be careful that it's not just the mindset that you're looking at, that it's actually not your actual body frame, your body type, which is the most important thing to look at in today's society. Because most of us live in the overwhelmed, stress-based state, right? Or more towards the irritability. Again, so we have the vata and then we have the pitta. What do we do for that? Well, that's dictated not necessarily by food, and it's not necessarily by our exercise. We have to keep that in mind because that could radically shift our body's ability to maintain a healthy body weight, which is pretty much one of the most important things in the world. If you listen to yesterday's show, you'll see how that obesity and even being 20, 30 pounds over your ideal body weight can drastically increase your chances for cancer and all the top causes of mortality. So super important we look at that. That's why I'm so passionate about this. And the big thing is this, you balance the body type with the removal of the stressors, not adding more stress necessarily to that, even in the form of exercise or over fasting, et cetera. So what we look at is, well, what do we do to balance that? Well, we always goes back to quieting the mind, quieting the nervous system. So that means the time of away from Wi-Fi and technology. That means getting your eight hours of sleep at night. That means doing meditation and hatha yoga and tai chi and stretching and qigong, and working on your breathing, and going out for a gentle walk, and getting into nature, and maybe go camping, all these different types of things. That is how we balance our vata and pitta-based mindset. So hopefully today's podcast was helpful. I appreciate you tuning in as always. And if this show was helpful, please do feel free to share this with anyone else you believe it could serve.
Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.